What a wonderful message we have. Yes. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's a message of love. Yes, we know God is holy. God, his love is much more. When we talk of love in the world, it's a wishy-washy love. But the love of God is a redeeming love, not a love that ignores sin. Not a love that is scared to offend, but a love that gets right to the root of the problem. A love that took Jesus to the cross. Amen. And this is the message that we proclaim. Thank God for the gospel. Hallelujah. Thank God that through the cross, not through our own works, not through our own efforts, not through our own Amen. religion, yes. but through the cross of Jesus, Amen. we stand redeemed this morning. Glory. Hallelujah. We'd all be on that road to hell, but for Jesus who made a way. Yeah. I'd like to talk about the eternal message this morning. It is a message that God has deigned should be, um, should be spoken and should be demonstrated through every age since the beginning of time. It is a message that will never fall to the ground. Jesus said, my word will go out into all nations and then the end shall come. Amen. This is the message of salvation through grace by faith. In Christ Jesus. Amen. It begins in the beginning. Um, in the book of Genesis, we read that God had a relationship with Adam and with Eve. And we know that they fell from grace and they went into sin. And right from the beginning, God began to speak with them. But even outside of that message, which we're going to start to go through, God has a message that goes out unto the ends of the earth that is spoken through the creation that is around us. I think that when we come to Christ and our eyes are open, we see in a fresh way the glory of the creation. I don't know about you, but I am overawed when I see, I don't like David Attenborough and his views on evolution, but I'm overawed by the beauty of the creation Amen. that I see. Absolutely. And how a man can look at that and not see the awesomeness of God can only be a deluded mind. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But Absolutely. we see glory all around us. We see it in every flower. We see it in the intricacy of creation. The more that they find out about things, the more it reveals the glory of God. I read this article recently. They couldn't understand how the, the, um, the pigment in a butterfly, they couldn't understand that in a hundred years, that pigment does not fade. And wow. so they decided the research is to research because all the pigments they use for clothes, eventually they will fade. And as they began to research it, they found that butterflies actually are completely transparent. Wow. But God has made the cells so that they refract the light in a certain wow. way to bring these certain colors. Wow. What a miracle work. Yes, hallelujah. We see glory all around us. Amazing. In Romans 1 and verse 19 and 20, I remember... Um, when I used to preach, I used to feel because I'm not um, a scientist, I haven't got a degree in science, I didn't have the authority to say much on evolution and creation, apart from the fact that I knew what God's Word says. Amen. Yep. But I think it makes it absolutely clear in the book of Romans and chapter 1. <clears throat> Romans and chapter 1. John. Yes. Verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Amen. The yes. existence of God, as far as God existing, God considers that every man and woman and child that has seen the creation around them is without excuse. We cannot look at some beautiful creation. Leonardo da Vinci, the, the Sistine Chapel, these beautiful artworks, and think... They came about by chance. There was an explosion and suddenly there was such intricacy. No. And yet we live in a world of intricacy. God says when we reject the knowledge of God, we are without excuse. His evidence is all around us. We look to the heavens and we see 
a size that we cannot even imagine. That's right. Hundreds of years yep. it will take us to get to some of those stars. Thousands we cannot years. imagine the size of the universe. Yep. It declares his eternal power Amen. and Amen. greatness. Praise his name. Yes. Psalm 14. In Psalm 14 it says these words. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, they have done abominable things. There is none that does good. The one I'm looking for, I've written the wrong psalm there. Psalm 19, there we go. Psalm 14, Psalm 19. Always check your notes twice. <laughs> Psalm 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. The firmament shows his handiwork. Day to day, unto day, utter speech, and night to night utters knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone throughout the whole earth and their words unto the ends of of the world. Praise God. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. God is declared by the things that are seen. The invisible God is made known by the visible. There is no excuse for not believing in God. But thank God our God of grace has a specific message beyond his existence and that message is the message of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And the amazing thing is that the Bible from Genesis to Revelation records that message. In the book of Genesis we read in chapter 3 and verse 15. And many theologians consider this the first reading of the gospel. In Genesis 3 verse 15 it speaks of um, the serpent and the woman. And it says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed, the seed of the serpent, and between her seed... The seed of Eve that would ultimately be the Lord Jesus Christ. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And we know of course that the heel of Jesus was bruised upon the cross. But the head of the serpent was crushed. This was speaking of the gospel. It was being preached at the beginning. The moment that man sinned. And as we go on we read. But it says in verse 21. And for Adam and his wife the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothe them. In this we see another preaching of the gospel. Yep. Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they knew the glory had departed. They were clothed in the glory of God. They were not naked. They knew they were naked because the glory, the light, the presence of God has departed. When Jesus appeared in his full glory, he was radiant as the sun. When Moses came down from the mountain out of communion with God, his face shone with the glory of God. Adam and Eve had a close relationship with God. They walked with him in the cool of the day. They were clothed with his glory, but the glory had departed. They tried to make themselves clothed with fig leaves. That represents the religion yeah, of man. Since right. man fell, there has been a desire, a need, an emptiness within man that has driven us to seek in every way to fulfill that need. This is man's religion, man's symbolism, man's ritualism. Anything that is outside of the word of God and God's Amen. way is empty religion. Yeah. And right. we're told in the last right. day, Amen. with a form of godliness, yes. but denying the power, power of the gospel yes. is always impregnated with the power of Almighty God. That's why it changes Amen. lives. That's why a countenance changes. That's why the words that come out of a person's mouth change when they have an encounter with the living Christ. He is alive. He changes us. He regenerates us within. His power is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The gospel was preached. And God came along and he said, listen, your religious works will do nothing. You need the blood of atonement. You need to look forward by faith to the lamb that is yet to come. And he took an animal and he slew that animal and the blood of that animal was shed. And God took the skin and said, in the same way this skin is covering your nakedness, only the blood of redemption, only when life goes back up to God to pray for the death of your sin, can there be true reconciliation with God. And God did this as a preaching of the gospel. And he confirmed it in Leviticus 17 verse 11 where it says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Yeah. God has given it to us on the altar to make atonement for our sin. The life is in the blood. Looking forward to the blood of Christ. 
Amen. Throughout the Old Amen. Testament, we see that God continually ensured that the gospel was preached. In Genesis chapter 5, you probably know this, it's a study on its own. But if you take the ten generations of Adam and, and take their names and translate them into the English, this is what the ten names of the ten generations of Adam say. Man is appointed to mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down, teaching his death shall bring the despairing rest. Wow. That's in Genesis wow. chapter 5, wow. the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can be assured the rabbis didn't put that in there. No. <laughs> <laughs> God put it in there. It's through the Bible, through and through. Hallelujah. In Genesis 5 and verse 21, we read, Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. Yes. And we see here again the message. Enoch was a prophet. In the book of Jude, we're told that Enoch, right back at the beginning, as a prophet, declared the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the day of judgment that was being held up for all men on earth. And as a prophet, Enoch would have declared the message of God. God has had his people from the beginning of time right through to today. And the message has always been declared and will always be declared until Jesus' feet are standing again on the Mount of Olives. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Enoch had a son. His name was Methuselah. When you're a prophet, you do all sorts of things. Prophetically. Yeah. I love the prophetic. Thank God for the prophetic Amen. words that came here this morning. Yeah. Thank God when I look back I see how God has encouraged me through the years through prophetic words. Yeah. But Enoch was a yeah. prophet. He had a son, Methuselah. His name means when he dies, it will come. Wow. Enoch was predicting the day of the flood. And if you go, again it's a study on its own, but you can go into what we know of the timings from the Bible and you can find out that in the exact year that Methuselah died, the flood came. Wow. God was warning the people. He never brings judgment without warning. He warns people. He gives them the opportunity to come to him to receive forgiveness and grace. Grace is the message from the beginning of time. How are the people of the Old Testament saved? They were saved not through the law. The law could never save anybody. The law was a tutor to bring us to Christ. The Bible says that Abraham was saved by faith because he believed God and it was appointed unto him for and righteousness. righteousness. The yeah. Old Testament saints were saved the same way that we are, but they didn't yet receive the promise. But when they fulfilled the sacrifices, when they honoured the way that God had said, by faith they were looking forward to the cross. And thank God that when Jesus rose from the dead and broke the chains of death forever, that all of those Old Testament saints that by faith had been looking forward received the promise. Hallelujah. And went out of their graves, appeared to many in the yeah, city, yeah, and went did. up into heaven. And they're in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God he preaches the gospel from the beginning. Enoch was a prophet. Wow. Methuselah spoke of the things that were to come in that exact year. Grace and forgiveness is throughout the Bible. And then we see Noah. Noah warned that judgment was coming. And in 2 Peter 2, it tells us that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Noah went out and told people the word of God. Noah spoke the truth. He proclaimed the gospel of grace unto that generation and gave them an opportunity to come on to the ark of salvation. Only his own family was saved, but the message went out. And the message will always go out. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. God for preachers of righteousness. Amen. We see throughout the Old Testament the blood sacrifice. It was immense. And it was immense because God wanted man to know the immensity of our sin and the barrier it brings between us and God. But also the glory of the sacrifice that was yet to come. If you look at when the temple was dedicated, 200,000 and hundreds of thousands of animals were slain and blood flowed from that temple. Yeah. God wanted us to recognize there is salvation in no other name and in no other power but through the cross and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And he's proclaimed it from the beginning of history and he wants it proclaimed again to the <coughs> nations of the world. Amen. For my word will go out into all nations and then Amen. shall the end come. What a wonderful Amen. message. 
What better message is there in the world today than the message of grace? A message that exposes sin. A message that stands in the face of sin, but does not point the finger in judgment, but says, come and receive forgiveness. Your sin will destroy you. Your sin is a vile thing, but if you will come to Christ, if you will receive His forgiveness, your sins can be blotted out and you can be made white as snow. Praise His wonderful, Amen. wonderful name. Amen. We see Christ in the tabernacle. In the symbolism, we see in the pillars the wood that spoke of humanity overlaid with gold that spoke of divinity. Yeah. We see God was already preparing that God, the eternal Son, would become flesh. That the divinity and the humanity would come together. That he would be totally God and totally man. That he would stand in your shoes and my shoes. And that he would endure this earth for each one of us so that he could relate to us. So that he could be like us and so that he could be a suitable sacrifice for us. We see it in the symbolism of the tabernacle. We see it in the priesthood. We see it in the sacrifice. We see it throughout the Old Testament. God is pointing forward to something better. What wonderful words we read in Isaiah chapter 53. What more glorious representation of the gospel. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Isaiah 53 verse 4. And yet we have esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. And yet he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned each one to his own way. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Again and again in the old covenant they would lay their head upon a lamb and the lamb would be slain in their place. The moment we come to Christ and receive him as our personal saviour, when we put our hand out to the lamb, our sin is instantly commuted to the cross. Thank you, where it was born Lord. Thank by you, Jesus Lord. for us. Thank there you. is salvation in no other name. Hallelujah. It's been proclaimed from the beginning. And then God came down, he became flesh, and he demonstrated the gospel. What beautiful times those were. Wouldn't it have been wonderful to be there when Jesus was speaking forth the word, when he was cleansing the lepers, when he was healing the sick, and the multitudes gathered, and he cast out devils with a word. What wonderful times he was bringing heaven to earth. He was declaring the message of the gospel in a practical way. Hallelujah. Yeah. He sent the disciples. He sent the seventy. And then he sent the apostles. And in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18, he speaks these words before he ascends into heaven. And he said, All authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. This was the great commission. Yep. Jesus commissioned the disciples. He commissioned the apostles. So that when he ascended into heaven, the same message that he spoke was proclaimed unto the church and unto the world. And that small group of people, we're told in the book of Acts, that the whole known world was turned upside down, not by them alone, but by the message that they preached. Amen. Because the power is not in a man, it is Amen. not in a ministry, it is not in a woman. The power is in the message. Amen. The gospel Amen. Is the power of God and the salvation yeah. and the Amen. And the church has got to pay a price to keep this message pure. Yes. We cannot afford to have it compromised. We cannot afford for it to be made grey. We cannot afford for it to be shrouded in all sorts of minor issues. The gospel is the core message of the church. It's being preached from the book of Genesis. It's going to be preached up until the end of time. And we need to guard that message. We need to value that message. We need to rejoice in that message. We need to live that message. And we need to proclaim the eternal message of the gospel. Amen. Amen. What sacrifice, what love, what power 
we have seen in church history. Yes, we can look back. The church has a history of many mistakes and many times of yep. darkness. Oh, but yes. there have been many throughout every church age that have stood for the true gospel of Jesus Christ. That have not minded going abroad and suffering the loss of all things for the sake of the gospel. That have not minded laying their lives down that the gospel may be preached. That have not minded laying their lives down that we might have this Bible today and be able to read it. The church has a history. Just as Jesus did, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Whatever the cost, the message has to continue going out. Amen. Whatever the cost in Great Britain, whatever they may say in the law, whatever society may become, we have a commission from God Almighty. And while we want to obey the laws of man, the moment they step over the laws of Almighty God, we will take no notice of the laws of man. We will continue to proclaim eternal truth. Amen. 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 Thank God for his truth. There is a battle going on between light and darkness. But yeah. praise God, the light will win in the end. Amen. This message is going to go on throughout time. Thank God, Jesus is coming soon. Yes, yes, yes. yes. He's coming in the clouds. We will see him as he really is and be changed in an instant to his likeness. He came meek and mild as a servant. He's coming back in the clouds of heaven in great glory. Yes. And for those that stand in their pride against the God of heaven and against what his edict and his word says, I wouldn't want to be in their shoes for one moment. I want to be hid behind the cross. Amen. Of my Amen. 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 There alone do I find safety. I am weak and all of us are weak. Yes. But before the cross of Christ, we find refuge. Yes. Hallelujah. We see in the book of Revelation that when the church is taken up, we believe it will be. We're going to be forever with the Lord. Hallelujah. God has an eternal plan for every one of us. And whatever difficulties you may be going through, whatever tragedy, whatever family problems, whatever opposition is coming against your life, remember what Paul said to the persecuted Christians. He says that the sufferings of this present time are not even worthy to be compared to the glory that is yet to be revealed. Lift up your eyes. Amen. There is a day coming. Hallelujah. A new body, untouchable by death and by sickness and by disease, when we will have a new mind that cannot be attacked by the evil one, that we will have relationships that are pure and holy and cannot be contaminated, full of hurt and pain. There is a better day coming. Let's Amen. Live on our eyes. Amen. Amen. When the church goes up, we read in Revelation chapter 7, 144,000 witnesses. God has put his hand on 12,000 from every one of the tribes of Israel that God yeah. puts his hand on. When we're gone, the message will not stop. No, it will continue. No, that's they right. will go out. We read at the end of Revelation 7 that behold, there is a great multitude yeah. that no man can number of every tribe and tongue and nation. When the church is gone, there are 144,000 messengers that are going out unto the ends of the earth. God ah, will have his message preached yes. before oh, he comes again. Yes. He will warn the people that judgment is coming and that Jesus, his son, is the only way. And when we see the 144,000 gone out, we see that there are three angels, messengers from God, that proclaim the eternal gospel unto men from every tribe and tongue and nation. Yes. And when the angels have passed, we see the two witnesses yes. that stand yes. in Jerusalem. And God will raise them back up from the dead and they will be a witness to all men. The <laughs> message will continue from the fall of man until the time of the ultimate redemption when Jesus sets his feet on this oh, earth. Again. What a wonderful thing. Today, we need to remember the church is the light in our society, the light in our world. We are the bearers of God's light. Because God is spirit, but he seeks to use you and me. God, the, in his flesh, has ascended into heaven, but he sent the Holy Spirit and said that this Holy Spirit will be like rivers that will flow out from you. And life will go out and it will touch people. And wherever you go, people will be touched. Always be ready. We laugh at home, my wife and I, the last few times we've been on holiday. We, we don't talk to people about God, but they come to us and we end up witnessing and, and sharing contacts and people are going to church and um, it's just wonderful. We met this most beautiful couple and um, 
we got on with them so well, they were an older couple, and the man, um, he was a dear man, but he'd suddenly come down with some disease, they couldn't quite get to the bottom of it, but he was totally losing his life, he could hardly walk, and um, they didn't give him long to live, they thought it was two or three conditions together, and um, this couple, we talked to them, we had meals with them, and we were walking back to our room one night, and uh, Debbie and I were saying to each other, you know, we just don't feel that we should say anything. And um, we said, Lord, if we're, if we're wrong in this, please show us. We're, we're willing to be bold, we're willing to talk to them, but we've just got that sense it's not for us to say anything. We listen to the Holy Spirit because He knows best. Yeah. And yeah. Um, anyway, the next day they were going home, and um, we were sat down by the pool, and the wife came down, and um, she began to talk to us, the tears began to run down her face, and she said, I want you to know, she said, that um, you're Christians, aren't you? She said, I can tell. Wow. She said, I want you to know, she said, that when I was a young woman, I was very involved in the evangelical Christianity, she said. But when I met my husband, I was told that if I married him, I'd go to hell. And uh, goodness knows who told her that. But, um, but only the Holy Spirit can touch a person to come what was obviously so deep within her heart could touch her heart. It was a divine encounter. Amen. Amen. Thank God, wherever we are, we will preach the gospel. Yeah. We ended up preaching to one young lady who I, I can tell you she was wearing less than um, we were when we were having a shower almost. <laughs> <laughs> but we ended up preaching to this young woman and the next thing, a couple of months later, it's, it so touched her that she was getting in touch with us. Can you find me a local church? Oh, and we oh, hallelujah. Church. Yeah. Thank God. Wow. Amen. Doesn't wow. matter what a person is on the outside. Doesn't matter what no, they, no, they, no, no, that's right. they are. That's right. The gospel draws people. It's life. Yes. And people need that life. And so many people have not heard the true, wonderful, liberating gospel. They don't need to be judged. No. They need to hear the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, when we were over in Greece, we met the pastor there. And what a wonderful example this was to me. Some years ago, I did meetings out in Greece. It's hard work out there. We had the um, Orthodox Church putting posters up. Faith is Orthodox. All else is heresy and telling people not to come to the meetings. But um, anyway, one of the meetings, one of the things that really impacted me, because it had never happened to me before, was that in one of the meetings, a lady came forward for prayer, and I began to talk to her about Jesus, and she said, well, who's he? And um, she, was, she was staying with a friend, she'd come from Albania, and someone had brought her to the meeting, and she had never, never heard, heard the of name Jesus. of Jesus. And many times over the years since that happened, it leaves an imprint on you. Yeah. You know, I prayed for Albania. It was an atheist nation, completely close to the gospel. And one of the lovely things I heard when we were in Greece, last time we were there, we had some time with the pastor of a local church there, and he was saying he'd come to Bible College in England, but he'd, um, he had a heart for Albania, but it was completely locked. And so when he got back to Corfu, where he was um, pastoring the church there, he was praying, and he felt the only thing they could do was send messages. So he made, I can't remember how many, but several thousand bottles, and put gospel tracts in each what? of these bottles and sent those bottles out to sea and never knew, of course, what happened. It's important when God puts something on our heart to do it, we never know the impact that it yeah. will have. Yeah. Well, many years later, Albania opened up. And when they got into Albania, there were only a handful of Christians, I think three that they found in the whole land. And one of these Christians was a policeman. And here was his story. One day he was told by his head officer, all your, um, you could get all the men together and go down to the beach. There are bottles in there with inflammatory messages in them. I want them all collected up and destroyed. He was so intrigued that he took one of those messages and put it in his pocket. And when he got home, he read that tract and he gave his heart to Christ. Hallelujah. And today is the pastor of a church and the gospel is in Albania. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We need to pray for these countries. We need to pray for North Korea. We yes. need to pray for these places, you know, that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are praying in accordance with the will of God. This is our challenge. We are born for such a, a time as this. God has a message through you. Yeah. You may not stand up and preach to crowds, but you may speak to one person that nobody else will ever reach. Yeah. You may have a connection with them. You may have an open door and you can speak in their hearts. 
you may be able to love them. You know, love opens a person's heart. When we judge people, it closes their heart. When we love them unconditionally like Jesus does, it can open a person's heart. You have people that you can reach. Ask God to show you those people. Ask God to give you opportunities and he'll do it. Yeah. And you will see people coming to Christ. Yeah. We are a light in our society. We must stand firm. We must not allow our message to be perverted. No. I hope you can come tonight. I want oh, to continue yeah, on this thing. You'll need to buy your seatbelts. Good. I don't know if you want to feel it. You won't get into trouble. <laughs> we need to keep the message pure. Oh, Amen. And um, what I'm going to say tonight is that to me, the greatest sin that the church can ever commit is not to speak the truth. Amen. It's the greatest sin we can ever commit. I grew up in church. But nobody ever shared with me the gospel. Thank God that I was able to go and hear somebody who preached yeah. that message. It totally revolutionized my life. We need that message. Whatever yeah, we the do. price we have to pay, Amen. That's we right. need it. Pay. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for the wonderful people that you have brought together this morning, Father. Thank you for your great love for each one. And thank you for the message initiated in eternity that has been shown to everyone that is here. The message of love, the message of truth, the message of redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ and forgiveness of our sins. This is why we stand this morning. This is why we are a church this morning. Why we are connected with you, Father, only through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you this morning for our redemption, Father. And Lord, as we are here this morning, we pray that that redeeming power would reach into every need, Father, into every heart, Father, into every situation, Father. Let that redeeming power, Father, touch us this morning in Jesus' name. There's going to be lots of time for prayer tonight, but if you can't come tonight and um, you're only here this morning and you'd like prayer, I don't want you to go home and miss out on that prayer. So if anyone would like prayer this morning, as we come to a close, please come forward and we'll be very happy to pray. Hallelujah.